Okay, so today we are diving into the AKK TX5000 Ultra Long Range VTX, which boosts an impressive 5 watts of output power. I will guide you through the connecting it to the flight controller, setting it up in beta flight, and finally, we'll put it in the test to a short penetration test. So let's get started. Before we dive in, let me give you a quick rundown of how we will be connecting the VTX and the equipment we will be using. For analog VTX, you will need to make four connections to the flight controller. You will need to connect the power cable, ground cable, VTX cable, and the smart audio cable or tramp. Do note the AKK TX5000 requires a minimum 14.8 volts to 28 volts to operate, so it is best to use at least six SFPV LiPo battery. This is to ensure that even when the battery discharges from 4.2 max volts to the minimum 3.5 volts per cell, you will still have enough power for the VTX to be operating. So for the FC stacks, we will be using the SpeedyB F405 mini stacks for this demonstration. We will be connecting the power cable directly to the bat pad to receive full voltage from the 6S LiPo. We are going to solder the ground cable to any ground pads, but we're just going to typically solder to this one. For the VTX cable, we will be soldering it to the VTX pad. Since our FC doesn't have a dedicated SA pad, we will solder the SA cable to one of the T pads. So specifically T6 in this case. For the camera, you will have two options to connect it. So first, you can connect it directly using the cable coming out from the VTX or solder it through the FC. So connecting directly through the VTX is convenient if you don't have an FC, but you will lose all the OSD information from the flight controller. So in order to receive full data from the FC, we will be soldering the camera through the FC this time with the three connections, five volts, ground, and the cam. Without further ado, Let's begin. Okay, so we're going to start by pretending the uh, little FC. This is the Speedy B F405, and this is probably one of the most budget friendly stack, mini stack that you can get in the market at the moment. All right, so as we said that we have, we're going to use the bat pad, we are going to use the VTX, we're going to use the T6, and we're going to use the ground we're just going to pretend these uh solder pads some are already did but we're just going to pretend it for now and we can make the connection later right so bad pad i think this is the only one we're missing okay, we're going to start by getting the battery pad the one that is on the battery solder it's easy to see this way okay, yeah that's easier Since these are like really small solder pads, it should be like a really easy job. That doesn't require too much of skill. You just have to touch it and it should stick. Okay, so we got our battery pad solder. Now let's go with the ground. Okay, same thing. Simple job. Next one, the green one is going to be smart audio. So we are going to have to connect this to a T, so which we will be connecting to T6 right here. I have to add a little bit more solder, a little bit more tin here because it's not enough. Let's see. cable we wanted to connect is going to be the video out the TX so we can have to connect it to the VTX pad okay. so we are done for the VTX part now let's connect the camera Okay, so the camera we will be using today, the analog camera we will be using to complete this demonstration is going to be the Ryan Cam Phoenix SE. So this is a pretty budget-friendly 
quite good quality camera in my opinion so we're just going to use this so what we're going to do is we're basically going to connect the 5 volt we're going to connect the ground and we are going to be connecting this is the cam the v the signal camera signal that goes in so cam all right so these three cables that we have to connect Okay, so the connection is now completed. Since now all the soldering has been completed, make sure you attach your antenna before you actually power it on. Otherwise, the VTX is going to get itself fried up pretty quickly. So what you're going to do is plug in this one. Plug in the MNCX cable right here. This, this is the one that actually came with the unit. And they also comes with a ultra long range, like, like basically a long range uh, antenna that was produced by AKK. So we're just going to use it. So the connection is very simple and this port is called the SMA. So this is an MNCX to SMA connection. So let's remove it from the package. And then you're going to connect it like this, just basically screw it in. Very, very simple. All right, so basically that's it. So make sure you always have your antenna connected, even with the small linear antenna, it's okay as well, but you have to have an antenna in order for the signal to go out. Otherwise it's just going to go inside and just, you know, fry up itself. And just additionally, I think you have noticed that I taped up these little cables just in case they don't touch each other. So we're just gonna to add a little tape so it does not like accidentally touch either because this is the last thing we want since we're not connecting a camera right now but i suspect i'm going to be using it in the future so i'm just going to tug it away like that for now just for the testing purpose all right so we can basically plug in our lipo but just for a precaution purpose we're going to bring out a short saver so the short saver what, what the short saver does is basically acts, acts as a bridge between your lipo and your hardware's so when you plug in your lipos into the board you are basically going to have an extra precaution things that if something is shorting on your equipment this thing is going to go real, go red on you so let's give it a try press this to be powered on so it should stay green as always otherwise if it's turning red something is wrong in somewhere just based on the manual of the tx5000 do know that this unit basically requires about five seconds in order for it to be completely powered on to the full max power of five uh, like basically five watts so you're not going to get the power blast just basically right away currently i don't think it's at set up as the max power so we're going to have to go into beta flight and we're going to just make sure that the, set, uh, the setup is com is correct all right so let's jump into the beta flight setups okay so to get this vts set up we're basically going to come to our computer okay so i don't know why i have that extra camera right there but and you're basically you're going to plug in this with a usb-c cable so to connect the flight controller to the uh, basically the computer, let's leave it. Make sure no nothing is touching each other. And then after this, you have to go connect to Beta Flight, and we're just gonna hit connect. So the first thing you have to do is going to go into the Ports tab. So you remember when we are previously soldering this uh, flight uh, this VTX to our flight controller, we basically soldered the Smart Audio to UR6, basically T6. So you will have to enable U UR6 and you're going to select TBS Smart Audio. So you have to select this in order for the VTX to work. And you can save and reboot. Okay, and then the next step, we're going to go to the video transmitter. So if this is the first time you're setting up or if you never used this AKK machine before, you're going to have to download their uh, VTX table and load it manually. So what you're going to have to do is you are going to come to this website. So I'm going to leave this also down below so you can just have a direct link to it. And you're going to come in here to download the file. So once you hit the download file, it's basically going to bring you to this Google Drive. And make sure you download the AKK Ultra Long Range All Channel version because this is the one we have right here. So once you have downloaded it, you have to go back to Betaflight and you're basically going to load the file. So load the file, load this JSON file and you're going to open it. 
and then you're gonna hit save. So once you hit save, the channel to the VTX table will automatically just update to the table that is suggesting. So do know I have confirmed with AKK that they did not use the standard VTX table format. So these numbers right here are going to be different than the usual ones that you have in your goggles or on your monitor. So make sure that you either use the search function on your goggles to search for the channel or manually type in the numbers in order to search for the correct channel that is on. So you can see that let's do a little example. Let's bring out a little Hawkeye little pilot. You can see that basically on the beta flight right now, we have set up our, let me see, we have set up our channel band to be A and channel is one. So A, you can see that A1, it's showing 5865, but in fact, on our beta flight is showing 5474. So it is a complete different number. So let's give it a try to see if we, if we power it up, if it's going to work. Okay. So once you have powered this thing up, I want you to know that it's basically going to take about five seconds for the VTX to enter full power mode before it's going to be a kind of not, not like blasting out right away. So you can see that obviously this is not working, but if we adjust it, using the auto search function to search which channel they, it is on right now. So the Hawkeye has it, you just have to press this little plus button, won't press it and it's gonna go auto searching. So it's going to show you that the channel currently it's on 5474. So it is kind of same as the uh, 5474, 5473 is kind of like the same band. So should so that's you can see that this is on L4 it's completely not A1 so basically this concludes how to set this up okay so next we're going to be doing a little penetration test for this AKK VTX the way of doing it is I'm basically just going to plug it in like this and I'm going to leave it in the garage and I'm going to walk outside to my front yard normally that is when I lose my normal FPV analog signals so the main reason why I do this is because, yeah, I live in LA and basically there's not a lot of places for you to fly long range unless you travel one or two hours away. And I certainly don't have that kind of time at the moment because when you have a family and when you have a daytime job, oh my God, that's nearly impossible. So this is how we're going to do it. I'm going to use this little clip just so the antenna stays upright. And I'm going to walk out from my garage and then I'm going to use the Sky Zone goggles that I have. This is the only analog goggles I have. And this is the Crosshair antenna. And on the top, this is the, I think it's called Luminar. Luminar Axi 2, the double ones. So I think this is the best antenna I can find at the moment. So we're just going to test like that. And we're going to plug in the LiPo. And we're just going to see after I go to my front yard. And basically, the thing between me and the VTX is going to be a giant house. We're going to see if we still can get signal. If I still can, I'm going to just probably swing out to the complex to see if I still can get signal and probably just go further and further until I lose it. All right, let's get going. Okay, so let's plug in the LiPo. I'm not sure if I'm going to actually lose signal on my microphone, but we'll give it a try. Okay, so let's see if I'm getting footage in my SkyZone goggles. So yeah, I have footage. Okay, so let's start walking. So although the VTX is actually saying that it's five, three watts, but in fact, it is actually five watts because the setting was correct, right? So this is my front yard. I have to adjust this GoPro a little bit. Just move it to the top. Okay, like that. Okay, so this is the front yard. Let's see if we can also get footage. Okay, so we're still getting footage. It's pretty decent. I'm facing it directly to it. All right, let's keep on walking. Okay, so penetration seems to be pretty decent. Okay, we're still getting footage. That's pretty decent, I have to say. Five meter watts. Wow, it's quite impressive. I'm still getting footage of them these days. 
crazy. Okay, so we're starting to get some snow, okay. But let's just walk out this complex and we will just take a look. Take a look and see if we can actually get anything. So this is basically two house. We are, there's a two house blocking this whole thing. Okay, you can see that signal is fading a little bit. But if I come to a little bit clearer, it's going to be still fine. Okay. All right, let's see. So basically, I think that's about it. But I think this is already pretty decent compared to almost to like a regular DJI quality. Like, I don't think like DJI can have this strong penetration at all anyway. So I think this is pretty, this is already like really, really good. Okay. So if I walk out the complex, with all the houses blocking, all the concrete in the middle, it basically has nothing left. Okay. Yeah, you can still see something. So, wow, oh, so pretty good. So, five watts. Oh my god, that's a lot of power. Okay. All right. So, I guess that's about it. Okay, so we're now back to the bench, and I will say the AKK 5000 actually performs better than I thought. Like initially, like. In the normal 800 milliwatt VTX, if I started to move to my front for my, if I leave it in the basement, if I'm in the basement, let me say that if I'm in the basement and if I fly the quant to my front yard, probably that's when I start losing signal. But this one is still performing really strong. Consider like my garage is also like a lower ground level and the place where my front yard, it's a little bit higher. So you can see that from the graph right here, the signal is actually not a direct transmission. It's like you're gonna have some of the block out based on the terrain. And the first house, it's kind of like, this is what I expect, it should work, otherwise you won't, you won't buy it. And the second house is something that actually got me a little bit surprised that you can still actually get signal from it. Obviously, it's not going to be a perfect, like, clear signal that you can do constant flight, but it's something that you can potentially use to get yourself out of the situation if you are if you don't want to get stuck, like, permanently. And the third house is something that it, I just wanted to push it a little bit, just wanted to see how it performs. Obviously, it goes to, like, a complete static. And a little bit, like, footage coming here and there. For that one, it's kind of suspected, but... I'm still surprised to see that at least you can see some of the footage not completely 100% static. So the distance I was walking, I would say probably it's only about 100 to 150 meters. So it's not really far, but the, since the purpose right here is we're testing the penetration and I'm really putting a lot of houses between this thing. Also a lot of trees, a lot of gates, post, post like mailbox, whatever. It's just in the middle. So I would say if you wanted to use this mainly for a long range flight, I would say this is a pretty good option. If you want to put it on your giant seven inch or 10 inch quad and use it for analog long range, I would say this is pretty good. And you probably will have some, some sort of additional peace of mind that it's not, you're not going to lose footage like that so easy. And the fact that it also has a little fan on the top, it actually cools it down. So I think this is a benefit that this thing offers. However, there's one thing I just don't like that much is I think they decided to use the self-mapped VTX table, which is just completely different to your goggles or your monitors. Yeah, when you're seeing an A1 on your beta flight and if you have to adjust it to L4 on your other on your goggles, I think it just adds a lot of like confusion right there. I just don't really enjoy that. I really wish that they can probably in the later builds or something, do something just similar to the original the original like whatever everybody's using can you just please use that so it's easier for people to just pick it up directly without having to find out how to uh how to do this all right so i guess this wraps us up this short video and if you have additional questions or if you have any comments please feel free to leave it down below and i'll see you in the next video bye for now